Um, hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us during your lunch hour today um, for this really informative job search webinar titled Pounding the Virtual Payment, Essential Advice on Finding Your Next Job with Career Coach and Bestselling Author Roy Cohen. Um, some of you might remember that Roy did a series of workshops with our NYC chapter over 10 years ago, which were extremely well attended. And so we're so excited to welcome him here again. Um, Roy, a little bit about Roy. He's a nationally recognized career counselor and executive coach, as well as the leading expert in Wall Street job search and career management. In addition to many uh, media appearances and frequent quotes, Roy speaks often at a range of events and is an advisor to Baroque College Master of Financial Engineering program. Um, he has an MBA from Columbia and an undergraduate degree from Cornell. Um, he's gonna speak with, speak with us for around 45 minutes. And then we'll have 15 minutes um, for Q&A. So feel free to use the chat throughout the presentation to ask your questions and we'll make sure they get answered at the end. Um, so without further ado, um, thank you so much for joining us and we're excited to hear from you, Roy. Thank you. Um, thank you, Denise. Thank you, Susie. Thank you, Cuppy. Um, everyone, it, it's Roy Cohen, as you all know, um, and uh, welcome. Um, I, I'm going to begin with an apology, um, and I refer to this as the three Ds, um, dogs, deliveries, and other distractions. Um, I cannot mute my, my phone <laughs> or my, my iPad, as it, as it were, um, uh, so you may hear my dog in the background, um, but if you all can mute yourselves, that would be great just because it would um, make it easier for other folks to hear and not to be distracted uh, by whatever's going on in our own lives. So, um, so you know, this title, Pounding the Virtual payment, it, Pavement, it's, it's almost an oxymoron um, and um, a, a contradiction in terms. We're pounding something that's virtual that doesn't really sort of feel uh, like it has either depth or texture, um, a substance. So what it also reflects is that um, uh, this is uh, uh, new for all of us. Um, and um, so uh, uh, what we're going to discuss today is how we manage our career and also how we manage our messaging. Because as I mentioned earlier, I began with a caveat and a, 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 an apology. Um, dogs, deliveries, distractions. Well, part of our new normal is working from home. Um, and that means that we need to kind of take that virtual um, experience and make sure that it is incorporated into our narrative, how we present ourselves to the world, how we explain who we are and what we want. And we're doing it now through a new medium, um, which is largely online. So I refer to this as job search 2.0. Um, a lot that's the same. In fact, job search is, um, is an activity that really hasn't changed a lot in terms of the core fundamentals. We have to be clear about what we want. We have to have a game plan and a strategy that we act on. And we also need to make sure that we are um, uh, uh, identifying obstacles and barriers that could dis uh, distract us. Um, so those aspects of job search are, are sort of the same. The, the challenge though is that we're operating in a relatively new and unfamiliar environment. And uh, COVID threw a hand grenade into the first, then the second, uh, then the third and the fourth quarters of 2020 and into the first quarter of 2021. And we were paralyzed at first, we began to adjust, companies began to adjust, um, and we have now a new normal or what is a relatively new normal that is emerging. And I like to think of it as our next normal. And that, that um, uh, concept is one which will define how we navigate our experience and our success in managing job search um, going forward, in fact, throughout our careers, because we're going to be thrown hand grenades repeatedly um, as our careers unfold, whether you're at the very earliest stages of your career, um, in the middle or at the tail end, we are still going to be facing uh, uh, many, many challenges that uh, we can't necessarily predict the challenge, but what we can predict and prepare for 
is how we respond to these sorts of challenges. So uh, flexibility will be important in terms of how we move forward. So as uh, Denise uh, and, and uh, Cuppy en encouraged you all, please ask questions. We'll save those for the tail end. So make notes. Um, uh, if you agree or disagree with what I'm saying, please, we'll talk about it at the tail end. Um, and also if there are questions that you have about process and or your own experience, uh, please feel free to share those as well. Um, and we'll tackle that as a, as a group uh, once um, uh, I've finished uh, talking. And uh, so let's move to the next slide, please. Oh, and we can go beyond that one. That's just uh, uh, some self-promotional uh, information about who I am. And I think we've uh, beat that one to death. So that is know, my bio. Know. <laughs> <laughs> but that's also how, you, how we can reach you too. Uh, oh, absolutely. Um, but you'll have an opportunity to see that information again at the tail end. So um, let, let's proceed to the next slide. So I, I don't have to tell you all, um, we are operating in strange times. Many of us have been uh, working remotely from weekend houses um, or cramped quarters um, uh, at home. Some of us have uh, relocated entirely. Um, I have a number of young clients who've uh, moved with friends and established, and I, this is sort of the next generation of co-op um, in places like Palm Springs um, or um, Alta. Uh, so there are a whole host of options that have defined how people have operated over this uh, past year. Um, look, we have a vaccine, um, a number of vaccines, um, um, but timing is uh, what defines our success in job search. And with the new variants that have uh, been introduced and the fact that there are, there is um, uh, a spike that's happening now, my belief is that um, much of how we've operated will continue to some degree to determine um, uh, uh, the tools that we use in terms of how we navigate job search. So um, I'm not sure how immediate the impact of the vaccine will be other than that some of us will be back in traditional environments, but I also think that the way we work will change irreversibly. And um, so uh, its impact with respect to job search and career management um, that's a little uncertain right now. What we need to make sure is that you are prepared to react and respond and that it doesn't immobilize you. And that I think was the fear that many of us felt very early on in this, uh, uh, in this pandemic. I, I, I can only think back um, uh, uh, 10 or 15 years ago and uh, Cuppy made a very interesting uh, point. <laughs> she pointed out that I did a, a workshop 10 plus years ago for a Chicago booth or a couple. Um, if this were, um, if we didn't have the technology to support what we're doing today, um, I in this meeting, I can only imagine that we would all have been paralyzed. But the, um, the support of just this amazing technology allows us to, for many of us to have uh, moved forward without skipping a beat. And embracing technology has worked for many of, many of us in terms of how we have uh, navigated and kind of negotiated with various, aspect, various aspects of uh, uh, the job market and our careers as well. Um, and I, I do believe, and I, I say this emphatically, that um, some of the changes that have occurred um, are going to be long lasting. Um, they... Uh, um, are, it is inevitable that they will leave an imprint and or change the way we look at our, our, our careers, how we conduct job search, where we work, um, and um, how we approach organizations. Uh, relocation uh, may not be so much a factor these days unless you want to relocate because many companies are um, very comfortable having folks work uh, remotely. So um, it's been a year like no other. And I just point that out to, uh, to state the, the obvious. Um, uh, uh, the next point, and this is a really important point when it comes to job search. And, our, you know, the, the notion of pandemic fatigue has been um, uh, uh, shared a lot in the media. And um, many of us are feeling fragile. We're feeling frustrated. We're feeling overwhelmed by just this sort of day in and day out um, experience uh, working uh, in, in, a, in a, an environment that may be solitary or way where we may have 
a lack of privacy where we are meeting like this, uh, where we have one meeting after another, after another. Um, when it comes to job search, remember that the people who you're either networking with or interviewing with, they're probably feeling very much the same thing. So um, we as, as folks who may be in job search need to approach this process with a little TLC, with some understanding, without an expectation that they are going to be more enlightened than we are. Um, because when we are in job search, we can of often personalize the experience and think that it's us versus them. Um, so bear in mind that whoever we are um, engaging in and with is most likely experiencing very much the same sort of um, uh, burden that we are. And that is essential for us to, to remember. So a couple of the dominant themes that have uh, defined our, our last year, um, uncertainty. Uh, we really don't know what's gonna happen next. We do know that there is this vaccine. We do know that it offers us some protection but we don't know um, how companies are going to respond or change. Um, and there is and will be some inconsistency in terms of the decision-making that they make. So be very careful that you don't get locked into um, thinking about your next situation in a way that is uh, too rigid or too, um, uh, uh, that, where there's no, ability for you to reframe that opportunity. We need to demonstrate that we are uh, flexible and uh, comfortable um, with, with change. That, uh, that uncertainty is something actually, an experience that we can embrace and manage and not, uh, that, that we don't allow to immobilize us. Um, uh, remote, well, again, companies are realizing that many of us can work remotely. And, you know, there's talk increasingly about shrinking um, the footprint that companies um, have. Um, and that means that when we're in job search, we have to demonstrate that we um, are comfortable using technology to communicate. Um, and we also need to be aware of what technology doesn't do for us. Um, technology doesn't allow us to be as, um, as warm sometimes as we would like to be, as engaging. So we may need to offset that through our correspondence. Um, uh, new leadership, and I think about this um, uh, from a political perspective, we have new administration. Um, it means that that will create new priorities and opportunities for many of us. Um, so we bear that in mind because um, it may have a, a, a significant influence on how we envision uh, different areas, different uh, uh, regions, different uh, kinds of uh, companies and opportunities emerging. Um, and the, the last theme that I think many of us have experienced is this notion of disruption. Um, what we knew has changed and we need to be able to um, uh, allow ourselves to uh, address it, um, understand how it has influenced our experience. And then if we want to make sure that we are not immobilized by it, we need to be able to flip very quickly, whether it's pivoting or just employing new tools and resources uh, to ensure that we're able to move forward. And um, sadly, disruption is often what um, uh, uh, is most challenging for people because uh, life changes as we knew it. And some of us are attached to um, the way we uh, operated, um, the way we worked. And I was actually having this conversation with a client over the weekend. Um, and this is an individual who over the course of her career, and she's actually in her 60s, um, she's had to reinvent herself a number of times. And, um, uh, and we were talking about some of the bosses that she's had who were very mean to her at various points in her career. Those individuals have literally perished um, uh, during the, the pandemic. She, on the other hand, has been so comfortable dealing with stress-related situations that were often outside of her control that she's been able to pivot very comfortably and she's thriving. 
So it's been a really interesting kind of experience for her. So disruption is an element that we need to think about, understand, and address if it is an experience that is threatening to us. Can we move to the next slide? Okay. Okie dokie, our network. So um, it is not too um, cliche for me to say that our network and our networks are sacred. Um, as we uh, explore this new and next normal, um, we're not meeting with people in person. We're developing these relationships virtually. Um, and we need to make sure that we're respectful, that we express our gratitude, that we are um, employing a strategy that gives people a reason to want to be a part of our network. So our networks now, more than ever before, are essential in terms of achieving success in job search. I was literally just in a meeting before this presentation with a client who, to my disappointment, um, has been relying too heavily on job postings. And we had a, a very stern uh, conversation today uh, because she's very frustrated, but she's frustrated because she's been unwilling to remove herself from what is a very comfortable place for us. And I shared with her an experience uh, uh, about one of my clients who is the exact same age as her um, in uh, uh, their mid fifties. And um, this is an individual who uh, um, is an ex-banker, went out to work entrepreneurially, um, uh, was successful uh, uh, in most respects, but ultimately he ended up um, uh, finding that um, the business had dried up during the pandemic. So we were go. this is not my client I was uh, uh, talking with before. This is just an individual who, whose experience I want to share with you. So he said, you know, I want to go back to a corporate position, but I'm not sure how to do it. And I said, well, why don't we figure out um, a few key themes that have been motivating for you over the course of your career, where your skills are most essential and valuable, and then where there's a need in the marketplace. So he happens to be a former banker um, uh, with experience in structuring uh, complex transactions. He happens to have um, an interest in real estate, which is what he focused on in his entrepreneurial venture. And we, through our conversation and research, discovered that there is a real estate transaction now that is becoming increasingly uh, uh, popular, it's really sort of coming into its own in this market due to this current administration. It's called a PACE. And um, I apologize, I don't know what the acronym stands for, but it's a, a green related product, um, a transaction that allows um, uh, 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 companies to save money. And um, so it's brand new. It's only been around for a couple of years. There are very few people who have any experience doing it. He happens to have three core uh, um, uh, qualifications that make him an ideal candidate. And this is all gonna be tied back to networking in a moment. So uh, we, uh, we said, okay, real estate, uh, 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 structured transactions, um, and uh, uh, the fact that uh, he is looking to move back to a corporate role, um, at one where he can hustle. And, um, so I said, well, how are we going to find out about it? Well, let's get a list of, of, of firms that are specializing in this product. We did. Um, and there were, oh, probably a dozen, if not more. And I said, let's go back now to your MBA program and see if there are any alums from your school who happen to be involved in some way in, um, in, in establishing and building out this transaction and creating a market for it. And lo and behold, Three, of, uh, three alums from his, uh, his school are active in this uh, financial transaction. Well, one thing led to another and all of a sudden he was popular. He was like the, the, the new flavor uh, because of his uh, distinct experience. And that happened through his networking, not through job postings because there are very few job postings for this area because finding an individual with these qualifications is looking for a needle in a haystack. And he was able to side skirt recruiters who are looking for candidates. So not only was he able to demonstrate how he could connect the dots for the individuals he was networking with, 
he was also um, saving them a lot of money. And they were very glad to introduce him to the founders of their firms. So it was interesting. Through his network, he was able to build out a very robust um, um, uh, uh, job search strategy. So networking then, and our network, it's the equivalent of currency in job search and in career management. We use it, we leverage it, um, we spend it in, in, in ways that allow us to uh, achieve satisfaction and fulfillment that support our success. Um, so uh, bear in mind that the quality of our network then will determine the uh, level of success that we have in terms of uh, uh, mobilizing it on, uh, on our behalf. So people matter, um, who you choose, how you cultivate them, um, these are folks who are going to make a difference in terms of your job search. So I always uh, tell folks that our goal when it comes to networking is to emphasize that it's about strategy. Um, our network, and, uh, and I uh, focus on this when I say, how do you stay connected and in, start, in, in touch? What is our goal? Our network should be organic, it, meaning it should be evolving and changing over time. Um, it should be responsive. Um, so it needs to evolve to reflect both our experience and our expectations, as well as what's happening out in the marketplace. So that, that is sort of a kind of an interesting equation. Um, how do we balance all three of those elements in terms of the people that we're reaching out to? So our network, and this is the next kind of point that I wanna make is that it should be future focused. It's not just about where we've been, it, 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 it should be about where we envision uh, going and where we see ourselves as um, a proceeding in terms of our next step uh, professionally. So I encourage folks to think about their, net, their network uh, from the perspective of ambition. How can I identify people that are gonna allow me to be successful? And are they successful in their own right? Um, now, how do we stay connected and in touch? The goal, um, we need to give people who we're reaching out to a reason to accept our invitation. So that means that our LinkedIn profile needs to be rich, it needs to be descript dis uh, descriptive, it needs to be robust, and I know it's an overly used word, it needs to be dynamic. So it needs to convey that what you do matters to both you and the world, it needs to convey your passion and it needs to um, give people a reason to want to accept the invitation. Although I'll share a secret with you about networking. When somebody um, you're reaching out to has 500 plus invitations, um, uh, 500 plus uh, contacts in their network, it's likely that they're gonna accept your network. What is uh, uh, challenging and the next step is what you do once they accept your invitation. So the follow through is going to be critical, um, how you get them to engage with you. And then once they've, um, uh, uh, once you've established a dialogue, how do you continue to cultivate that relationship over time? And that's really, really important in terms of um, being able to mobilize these people on your behalf. Um, next slide, please. So, um, uh, a couple of themes are driving job search and hiring these days. And I'm sure that you all know this um, uh, uh, far better than I do. Um, uh, tech and transformation. Um, you know, the, the, the universe now is driven by uh, innovation and change. Um, uh, many people uh, 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 look at Wall Street and uh, some in fact, look at firms like Goldman Sachs and refer to them as technology uh, organizations because technology is really informing how companies do business, how they engage with clients. Um, and that uh, technology and transformation is happening across industries. Think about uh, Amazon, um, um, even companies like J. Crew. how do they get their uh, merchandise to clients and, and Costco? Um, in a way that uh, uh, is able to allow for happy customers. Um, so, so that is an essential part of business nowadays. Um, uh, the, 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 the fact that the way we operate um, is largely driven by um, the technology that's in place. Um, 
more and more the way we work and the way we're interviewed is going to be handled remotely. I don't know anyone who has not been interviewed remotely these days. I, no one. Um, and the fact is that you need to get very comfortable doing it. You have no choice about that. Um, and so that means that uh, you may want to practice if it's something that you feel is a little awkward for you. Where you place the camera could be odd. Like there, I, you see my dog Oscar, maybe, oh, sitting there quietly on the chair. So the fact is that um, how we position our camera can make a big difference in terms of um, the impression that we make, um, because being camera ready uh, says that we are um, uh, uh, ready to interview. Um, I've talked almost, uh, uh, almost ad nauseum about the new and the next normal. Well, that is the market now, and we don't know exactly what it's going to look like um, going forward, but we need to have a point of view. And that point of view has to be one that's tied directly uh, to how you operate professionally, what you want to do. People that you interview with are expecting you to have an opinion. They're expecting, to, expecting you to share your perspective. They want to know that um, you have a deep appreciation for what could potentially happen next. They want to know that you're smart. So that uh, uh, is something you need to make sure that you uh, pay particular attention to, especially if, you're, um, uh, if your job search is focused around a pivot. Um, it's even more important that you be able to demonstrate that um, you have an opinion, that it's well-formed, and that it's based in um, both your insight, research, knowledge, and, um, and through the conversations that you're having. Part of the impression we make is um, based on who's in our network. So that will demonstrate to folks that you are sincere about pivoting. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, layoffs define the marketplace. Um, companies are just, um, for better or worse, increasingly comfortable both laying off people and bringing people on board. Um, uh, uh, the challenge, though, is that it, it's more complicated to get them to pull the trigger when it comes to making hiring decisions these days. And the last point I want to make about the market is that we as individuals need to make sure that we go into job search with reasonable and real, realistic and maybe even realigned expectations that um, uh, we don't go in with uh, an edit where we're saying, I won't consider this job or that salary is too low. We don't know if, um, uh, uh, if through conversations that we have with the company um, uh, that they may think about us from a, a brand new perspective once they get to know us. And I, I have a client who recently was interviewing for a position and I insisted that he take the interview he went in um, knowing that it wasn't the right level, but they were so impressed with his background that they, um, they realized that they couldn't possibly offer him that job and that he would bring unique and very special qualifications to the firm. So they were getting a lot of, um, a, a lot of the boxes checked off with this individual. So even paying him more money um, made him a, a relatively good bargain for that. Um, and with respect to the market, I, I, I say, well, what's next? And um, what I mean by that is that we need to be able to offer up solutions to, um, uh, uh, to the individuals that we're, we're reaching out to. Hiring managers now, uh, peers are burdened. Um, there's a lot that's riding on their own success. They wanna know that we are going to offer up solutions and insight. And that's what drives the hiring process nowadays. So it's, it's essential that you're able to uh, demonstrate that you're, you're comfortable thinking both outside the box and inside the box, and that you're able to share that insight with the folks who you're, um, uh, uh, who you're interviewing with. Whether it's actually interviewing or even networking, people want to know that you have um, uh, uh, important information to share. So that, that has... Um, um, that has uh, some bearing on our follow-up as well to interviews. Um, so next slide, please. Next slide. Okay, um, areas of opportunity. Um, and these are just a sample. Um, 
and they cross a number of industries and functions um, uh, uh, turn around in distress. Well, I actually thought that would be far more robust early on in the pandemic. It's still uh, uh, relatively frothy, but it, uh, the bankruptcy industry has not been as um, uh, as uh, uh, as, as it, it just hasn't been as devastating as I was expecting it would be, which is a good thing. I'm delighted to know that it's focused around hospitality, uh, retail, um, and some of the obvious industries. So turnaround and distressed is, is something um, uh, for consideration. SPACs, they're on everybody's radar screen now from celebrities to uh, 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 to uh, billionaires to, um, uh, uh, to athletes. Um, small to mid cap investing, very, um, very hot right now. And very few people who can demonstrate extensive background um, in small and mid cap investing. Family office. Um, and when I mention family office, there are two kinds of family offices. And as you all, I'm sure know, um, family offices exist to um, manage either assets, uh, both financial and or physical, um, for uh, uh, the ultra wealthy. Um, and there is far more family office activity now than ever before because there's more wealth at that end of the food chain. Um, so there are two kinds of family offices. There are those that focus on investing and there are those that focus on um, basically managing the lives of those uh, families um, where, you know, the financial management is outsourced. So these are families where you're overseeing estates, um, airplanes, travel, screwing in light bulbs, um, stuff that they either can't do or don't want to be bothered with. Um, so that, that is an area where there's a, a heightened activity. Um, the challenge for many is finding that point of entry, just because families at that level of wealth tend to be very, very uh, private. Um, ESG, that's uh, 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 investing and or products around social good and, and the environment. Um, as we've mentioned, uh, as we've discussed uh, earlier, um, the Costco's and Amazon's and other retailers of the world um, have expanded our need for logistics experts exponentially. Um, and that we've... Uh, that, that has been a source of uh, frustration for many of us um, when we don't get our, our products in time or they disappear. Um, and that activity has just increased um, in, 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 uh, in, in, if you look online, there are enormous number of, uh, of opportunities in that category. Uh, artificial intelligence data, yes, that's driving um, innovation. Uh, technology as separate from AI, just because um, uh, that that um, really drives the infrastructure of companies. So technology um, technologists, programmers, um, and technology officers um, to help uh, uh, support a business success um, more more important than ever before. Um, financial services are focused increasingly around structured products, algorithmic uh, trading, um, more complex uh, financial activity. Um, and then uh, things that are green. Um, the environment is hot now. And I'm seeing that uh, across many, many industries, whether it's hospitality, um, uh, real estate, um, even financial services, that's uh, uh, green banks. Um, uh, virtually every state in the United States has a, a green bank now, uh, which finances uh, green activity for um, all sorts of companies and communities. And then the last uh, area where I'm seeing enormous amount of act activity, um, largely for um, minority groups, um, women, um, uh, board seats and board activity. Um, it's important, though, to be able to demonstrate that you have experience in governance and, and audit. Um, so, uh, and I want to emphasize that if any of these or any other options that you're considering um, uh, and, and or exploring new directions, um, uh, i.e. a pivot, it's up to you to connect the dots. You're going to have to be able to do that. Um, so that being said, let's go to the next slide. 
And that's about breaking through and how we do it. Um, whenever we want to make a change, whether it's to do something familiar or something brand new, um, we really need to begin with a game plan. Um, and that's focused around what you want, what's your goal, um, how you're going to make it happen, and um, how do you get people excited about making it happen, and then ensuring that um, if you do fall off the wagon and get discouraged in executing your game plan, that you don't allow yourself to um, get discouraged because that can derail you when it comes to success in job search. What I, I tell people nowadays is that, you know, it feels to many of us like every day is Groundhog's Day. So when it comes to uh, your game plan, mix it up. It's important for you to come across as offering up something different and unique. You got to stand out and apart when it comes to presenting yourself to the market now. You don't want to come across as just more of the same to who, whoever it is that you're presenting yourself to. Um, we, we can't deliver or, um, uh, uh, or achieve our goals when we follow the same old set of rules. Um, and again, I mentioned the notion of pandemic uh, fatigue. It's real. Um, and if every day feels like the day before, the only way that we're going to get folks to pay attention to us is if we do something that's different to stand out and apart. Um, so make sure that, um, when you reach out to people that you're able to kind of demonstrate to them that it's worth their time and attention and interest to, um, to spend time with you. Again, I want to focus back on that uh, client of mine who, um, who was making a, a shift in looking at this new area called PACE. Um, it was up to him to very proactively connect the dots for his audience. And he was able to say, literally, I, my goal is to pursue the following, um, and here's why. And we need to make sure that all of us are doing that when it comes to uh, um, how we present ourselves to uh, the marketplace. We need to be bold. We need to make sure that we're doing the heavy lifting for whoever it is we're talking to. Don't allow them to, um, uh, 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 to do the thinking that we need to be doing. We need to be precise. We need to be able to say, uh, here's what I do. Here's why I do it. Here's what I want. Um, advocates, um, it takes a village and that's the whole point of having a network. Um, we need to make sure that there are people out there who are willing to endorse us. So that's where um, uh, uh, establishing this community based on people wanting to connect with you because you've impressed them is going to be important. And I, I mentioned this next point, being open to all options, um, at least at the very start, don't rule out opportunities or options because you think they may not be the right level or the right amount of money. It's good practice at the very least to uh, have these sorts of conversations with folks. Um, I tell people often when it comes to um, job search, Contemplate if you have the time and the bandwidth um, to take on part-time consulting work or interim opportunities. When we are engaged in work, it makes us uh, a little more interesting to our audience. What it also does is it um, uh, makes us less available. When we are universally available and say someone calls up and says, hey, um, um, are you available to interview later this afternoon or tomorrow? Um, and you say yes, all of a sudden you've, um, lost a couple of points in, um, uh, 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 from their perspective, because it sounds like you've got nothing going on. But if you're able to say to them, you know, look, I'm very, uh, I'm excited about talking with you. Um, I'd love to do so. I'm tied up this evening and tomorrow. What about um, uh, this coming Friday? It's going to sound as if you've got uh, demands on your time and you've got other commitments, which will make you a little more interesting and more exciting. Not disinterested in the opportunity, but less available, yet less immediately available. Um, uh, messaging, um, it's your resume, it's your story. That's the narrative that you use to uh, uh, explain uh, who you are, what you want. It's the correspondence that you use to introduce yourself. And then it's your follow-up and follow-up is essential when it comes to um, how we engage um, with uh, our, the various stakeholders in our job search. We wanna make sure that they know that one, we are filled with gratitude. Uh, two, 
that we are um, worth the time that they spend with us, and three, that we have what it takes in order to be successful. And then that leads to the next point that I want to make, which is stickiness. That is our goal in all of job search. We want people to see us as uh, folks that they want uh, around. Um, so there needs to be a staying power when it comes to um, uh, um, how people envision us. It's uh, 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 just a, a silly word to kind of express that sort of um, that, that, that desire for us to remain connected. Um, next point, and it's important, um, uh, and I, it, it, this is important for me as well. Um, we have no choice in this market but to be bold, but to, um, uh, 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 to put ourselves out there, especially because we're working virtually now. And as I mentioned earlier, we need to have a point of view. And that point of view needs to be one that we can express comfortably with folks. And as I also said before, when it comes to negotiation, don't negotiate with yourself early on or at the beginning of the process. If that salary is not where you expect it to be, it's either wrong or you'll need to upsell. And upselling is the opportunity for you to really kind of hone your story and to get people excited about you. And if for some reason it really is not the right opportunity, at least you've established a, a, a good networking contact because they'll be impressed with you. The goal is to get an interview. It's to look at this process as a marathon and to recognize that we don't have control over the timing. Um, the next point, and um, we're gonna wind down in a moment. Um, next, uh, next sheet, please. Um, a pivoting, and that's always an option. Um, I say what, why, and how. Uh, what, we need to be precise. Remember that your audience is impatient. Uh, they may be a little lazy. Um, they are not going to do the heavy lifting for us. So we need to be crystal clear in terms of how we tell people what we want and our explanation why it has to be uh, uh, compelling enough, um, but not so burdened that we're walking them through a saga. So uh, crystal clear, but brief enough to get people to feel like uh, we're not uh, 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 weighing them down with this dramatic story. Um, and then how, what is it that you're going to contribute? How did they benefit? And that is um, essential because we often forget that part of getting people excited about us is for them to know that they're going to benefit by, um, by either getting to know us or hiring us. Um, in making a, a, a pivot, a career change, we have to demonstrate that uh, by making this change, that we are committed to it, that it's meaningful for us, that we that we're not just um, uh, flirting with this notion, that we are th that we're, we're serious. And how do we do that? Well, it's uh, by the classes that we take, the cert certificates we may take, continuing education. Um, it's also about the network that you establish. The more people who are engaged in the kind of work that you want to do, it will visually explain to um, the community that you are reaching out to, that you mean what, what, what you're saying, that you're committed to this, that you want to do it. And the more people that accept your invitation, the, more, the greater the credibility you have that this is something that, um, uh, that, that uh, people believe you can do. So we're building this robust community that will hopefully support our success. Um, and I, when it comes to pivoting you versus other candidates, why you versus others? And there will always be others with a background uh, that may be more relevant or more experienced. Um, it's how we connect the dots. And I have a client I've been working with, um, or work with recently, and he's a very senior fellow and works for a public relations agency. And he wants to move to a senior role in a corporate organization heading up corporate communications. Um, and in some of his earlier interviews, um, he was getting pushed back. Well, you've never worked in a corporate communications role per se. You've served as an advisor in terms of PR. Um, and we're looking for somebody who um, has actually worked for a corporate organization. We were able to simply address that by saying, well, what you get with me is an individual who's worked with dozens of companies which has allowed me to have great insight into not just one organization, but many organizations. So my experience, despite the relative youth that I bring, 
um, is very rich because it crosses many organizations, many interests, many needs, many challenges that you all are potentially going to face. Um, and that was an interesting way for him to approach this because that was not what they were expecting to hear. They were initially looking for somebody uh, who could be a plug and play, who could come out, who came out of another corporate organization. He was able to convince them that his very um, uh, uh, um, that, that his experience working with lots of organizations was even more valuable. So what they needed to be was reassured um, that he uh, uh, would hit the ground running. And that's what we also need to demonstrate when we, uh, we pivot. And last but not least, final slide. Um, uh, uh, and I mentioned this uh, a number of times throughout uh, this discussion, um, uh, how do we establish traction, whether we're networking and in job search, notes, calls, catch up, follow up. Um, I, remember I mentioned earlier that people need more and more now uh, 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 to be embraced and nurtured and to feel that TLC. Um, you know, how, what is the, the, the quality of your correspondence? Does it com convey your, your, your sincerity, your gratitude? Um, more important, does it also convey your ability to both hit the ground running and your potential to offer up solutions? And then if you're uh, reaching back out to your network um, on some regular basis, what do you say to demonstrate to them that you're not just asking for something from them, you wanna keep them looped into your level of activity? And that's important because that message needs to be very unique to you. So on that note, I'm gonna wind down and um, uh, open it up to questions. Um, so, Roy, thank you so much for the, inc the incredible talk. There's been a lot of questions coming through in the chat. Um, so we'll get started with oh, the first and let me, um, if I can exit the screen, I want to go to gallery. So bear with me one second. Whoops. And let's go to gallery so I can look at folks. Um, hold on. There Perfect. we go. Um, and if people okay. want to their cameras on to ask questions, um, feel free. Um, we'll get started with the ones in the in the chat to get things rolling. Great. Um, so for, for the first question we have, how do we get past, how do we continue conversation past getting connected on LinkedIn? It seems people are willing to connect on LinkedIn, but it's difficult to keep the conversation going. Any tips would be appreciated. Sure. Well, you think about what you're asking them for. Are you asking them for a job? Are you asking them for um, information about a specific opportunity that you've heard of? Because if that's the, the case, um, then they're going to feel like it's, it's awfully one-sided. And um, one-sided job search doesn't really move forward um, uh, that far. You've got to give them a good reason to, to want to get to know you early on or early enough for, uh, 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 in, the, in this process because you're cultivating a relationship. It would be the, you know, I tell people always the best uh, job search book ever written is not a job search book. It's called The Rules, A Woman's Guide to Dating. So if you're on a date and, and you say to somebody, um, it's your first date, hey, can we get married? Um, what do you think that person's response is going to be? They're going to, um, uh, uh, they're going to disappear immediately. So, so think about this as cultivating a relationship. Um, it's getting to know that individual. We want to make sure that they know that we appreciate the fact that they're available to, to, to chat with us. I'd want to know first about um, any advice that they have to offer that can help help me facilitate this process, help to expedite it, um, how they did it. Um, if they were me, how would they approach this process? But if I entered a first meeting after um, somebody accepts my LinkedIn invitation and I say, hey, you know, look, I know that there's a job um, in your company. Who do I reach out to? Uh, without having any history with that person, um, I, if I were that person, would say, no way. Um, why would I share valuable information with a complete stranger who I don't have any reason to trust? So you've got to cultivate a relationship in order to get people to want to um, believe in you and support you. That's super helpful. Um, the next question we had was, if um, during the pandemic, you may have taken a job, you know, to get through the interim to pay bills or for other considerations, but it's not related to what you ultimately want to do. How does that affect future conversations? Well, you know, um, a lot of people have done that and it, 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 it only affects future conversations if you make it a large part of your, of your narrative. So, um, you might also 
uh, find a place on your resume um, elsewhere under, say, additional background, or we might relabel it consulting assignments. Um, uh, so that way we're able to kind of redefine what that experience looks like. Um, or we may leave it off. A lot of people have been um, unemployed for much of the pandemic. So it really is a lot to do. That's a very sort of personal kind of ex uh, uh, decision. Um, and, and it's hard for me to say uh, 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 exactly what somebody should do, but we have many options in terms of um, how we um, uh, uh, share that information. It's, it's really a, a, a strategy and marketing decision. Where do we put it? How do we talk about it? Um, um, and uh, do we make it part of something much bigger? So is it all that we've done? Or is it part of maybe how we positioned ourselves as a consultant? And if that's the case, then we can make the consulting more about what we want to do next. And this could be a specific assignment that we've had. That's, that's super helpful. And I think it relates to our second question, which was like, how do you position if you had you know, an opportunity to re work remotely before? Um, is that something you want to include in your cover letter and your in your um, in your resume to kind of demonstrate that you can work remotely and contribute away from the office? Uh, well, absolutely. I think that it only makes sense though if they're looking for individuals who are comfortable working remotely. So um, the reality is that you know there are a number of institutions now that are wanting people back in the office. I think Google is one of them. Um, Goldman Sachs. The G companies um, are uh, seem to be um, insisting that uh, folks return to the office sooner rather than later. If if I went into that conversation emphasizing my ability to uh, uh, work remotely, that's not what they want to hear. So this is a strategic decision. How do we incorporate it? It could be through um, demonstrating that we uh, through the technology that we use. Um, and hi, I see a little baby out there. <laughs> Job search is happening at an earlier and earlier age. Very, very smart of you to expose your, uh, is that your daughter or something? I can't tell from here. It, expose her to, um, to the marketplace. <laughs> so anyway, um, so, so uh, I, I, the way we uh, share that information has a lot to do with the kind of opportunity that we're talking about. So, you know, think about it. Is it um, a company that is largely driven by uh, remote work or is it a company that is um, uh, uh, looking at the market and saying, hey, uh, we need to get people back in the office. So our messaging is tied to whatever their needs may be. Um, but we can demonstrate it through uh, um, uh, uh, through the content in our resume. So if you're currently working, um, and you can describe some of your activities in terms of um, having been successful in working remotely. Well, all of a sudden you're, you're demonstrating that that's something you're very comfortable doing, but you may not wanna do that um, if, they, if the company doesn't want uh, their workforce largely to be working um, offsite. That makes a lot of sense. And um, I think good advice on marketing your resume specifically to the, to the company. Um, one of the other questions we've gotten is, what is the tipping point to consider hiring a career coach or a headhunter during the process of finding a mid-senior management job? So I'm going to make an observation. Um, that question um, is a dangerous one. Um, first, because you don't hire a, a, a recruiter. I think you said a, hiring a recruiter, a career coach or a rec executive recruiter. Recruiters don't to provide uh, career advice or job search advice. Um, and to be quite frank with you in this market, recruiters are um, scrambling for, for activity. So um, be very careful in terms of expecting that a recruiter is going to be your advocate. If you have all of the right experience, they're going to place you, but they're not career counselors. Um, you, in, in terms of evaluating whether or not it's the right time to hire a career coach, one, um, what are the, the challenges that you're facing? Are they monumental or are they, uh, and if they are, then it may benefit you uh, and you're feeling um, uh, challenged, then it may help you to hire somebody to help work through some of those challenges. Are you further along in your job search? Are you needing to fine tune it? And it may be that a career coach is helpful to you uh, in terms of uh, dis uh, distinguishing yourself from other candidates, or you may be at the tail end of your job search and you're really focused around making sure that you are getting 
what you deserve in terms of compensation and the negotiation process is being handled successfully. So there are, uh, and you may currently be working and uh, you may also be wanting to figure out how to negotiate your exit from the organization. There are a whole host of, 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 of um, points along this arc of career that um, uh, uh, will determine whether or not a career coach is valuable. Um, uh, and that career coaches can, one, they can help you uh, uh, crystallize what it is you want to do um, or reframe. They can help you uh, develop uh, your game plan and strategy. They can intervene if you're not making the progress you want in your job search. And they can also help you when it comes to negotiating and or your entry into a new organization. So career coaches are also at times executive coaches helping you, man helping you manage life on the job in your new organization. So there are a whole host of uh, points of entry. Super helpful. Um, the other question we have is, what is the best way to get feedback from interviews when you get rejected? Many times they're hesitant to provide feedback. Well, they are for, li uh, for potential uh, lit uh, litigation. They're fearful that if they provide information that um, may feel like you've been a victim of a discrimination or bias, that it's um, uh, they're stepping into some sort of dangerous zone. Um, uh, I always tell people, when you get invited for an interview, reach out to everyone you're being interviewed and establish a LinkedIn relationship with that individual. It's likely that they will accept your LinkedIn invitation if they know that they're interviewing with you. It's just a, a friendly gesture. Um, and then if you end up being rejected, um, don't assume that it's because uh, they hated you. It may be that you just weren't the right candidate for that particular job. I, had a can I was on the phone with a client early this morning who was a candidate for a job at Amazon. And um, when she got rejected for the job, she was really upset. And I said, well, reach back out. You've already established a LinkedIn relationship. Well, it turned out that they were really looking for somebody with a different set of, um, uh, of qualifications. They liked her, but they found a candidate who was really a closer match, but they wanted her to stay in touch and she is in touch with them. So there was nothing threatening about her decision to reach out. In fact, it, it, it was, it was actually reassuring for her to know that they were willing to take her phone call and spend time with her. So I encourage folks to, uh, to reach out um, and say, hey, you know, I, I'd love to get some feedback. Um, I was very excited about the position. Any information or suggestions would be enormously valuable. Um, did anyone want to quickly ask any questions to live? Um, Tammy, I didn't know if you wanted to since you had um, put your camera on, but wanted to give everyone a chance. I know we're winding down on time. But, I see um, Alyssa Gilbert. Hi, can I just ask a quick question? Do you, and you know, in the past, it's always been harder to find a job when you're out of work. I mean, it's just, it always seemed like you had that extra leverage. Sure. Do you perceive that it's, it's viewed as... Um, different in the pandemic that more people have lost their jobs and it's because I've been out longer than I anticipated. And the first yeah. really six months, uh, I was completely, you know, paralyzed by the paralysis that was going out yeah. in the world world. So is it perceived differently? And can we all, you know, on the call, if you are looking, have the confidence that maybe, you know, it's not, a problem like it was or are we so the question then Alyssa, is um uh you know if we've been out of work um are we branded with this scarlet letter um that says it's a u for unemployed and maybe an l for loser i think you're <laughs> saying that and i don't mean that to be funny um the fact is that nowadays and increasingly over the last couple of years not just pandemic uh uh, speaking from the uh, perspective of the pandemic, um, nowadays, um, given the, the fact that the market has been somewhat fragile um, in different industries, um, uh, folks who are employed and looking um, raise skepticism. So it's a lot easier to explain why, an in, why any of us might be in transition. Um, it's a tougher to explain why you might be leaving a stable organization. So, so my belief is that what you need to be able to do is demonstrate that you've used your time productively. Um, again, building out your network, um, uh, educational purposes, if you're pivoting or deciding to pivot, that you're really kind of preparing yourself in a meaningful way um, to take on that initiative. And we, we all know that a pivot takes more time 
And to be quite frank with you, um, being in a job or being employed has no bearing on whether uh, you're going to be successful in pivoting. In fact, it may mean that you've had less time to prepare to make a, 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 a significant career change. So, so there are a whole host of ways that we can look at that, but it's really more about one's attitude. Um, and that's why I said before, we've got to be bold and confident and recognize that, that job loss is a fact of life. And it's going to be a fact for all of us at every point in our career. And we need to make sure that we've got the confidence to, uh, uh, to address that in a way that gets people to recognize that it's not an issue for us. So if it's not an issue for us and you've filled your time productively and in meaningful ways, then you're going to be um, a far more interesting candidate. Thank you. Um, what, anybody want to take the last question? Um, yeah. All right, I'll, I'll share one that I received um, just now, but how do you future focus your network if you're still trying to figure out what your future is going to look like? Well, you don't. Um, you start out with a, 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 a tentative strategy and or game plan, and then the network is a community that you build around that, that game plan. You're, you're wasting time and energy. It's like doing a resume before you know what you want to do, before you have a goal. Uh, it's a waste of time. The first step is to be crystal clear on on. A few, at, at least one, if not two or three options. And then we build a strategy around that. And that's part of that strategy is a resume. And it's also um, building out your network, a community that will appreciate that that's what you want to do. So it, it's starting where it's like we're, we're, um, uh, uh, we're, we're, uh, we're taking the final step and we're entering it from reverse when it's most important and most productive to really start at the very beginning. It's like building a house without the actual infrastructure, it's gonna collapse. That makes a lot of sense. Um, I know we're at time. Thank you for staying with us a few minutes over. It's been incredible. Oh, my it's last slide. <laughs> oh, yes. Um, you know, I, 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 And this is, uh, I, I mentioned this for all of you because I'm, I'm I, what I, what I do, I'm not naturally um, extroverted. Um, you have to all engage in shameless self-promotion. That's what job search is about nowadays. So that last slide is about shameless self-promotion. It's how to reach me. So um, I just mentioned that to you. Roy, I'm incredibly sorry. I believe Denise okay. had the deck. and But what we'll do is we'll make sure to send out the recording, the deck, and also your contact information in the chat. I think Denise already sent that through, but we'll send it once more so it's top of the chat for everyone, but just wanted to say an enormous thank you. This has been um, so engaging. And I think just seeing all the questions pouring in, it's been really useful for everyone on the line. Um, so huge thank you to you and thank you to the you. Chicago Booth community for joining us. Um, ho hopefully this was useful and um, just feel free to reach out to myself, Denise um, or Susie, if there's any questions about um, contacting Roy, but hopefully we'll be able to get that all over to you and you won't have I, I am all over the internet as you all should be as well and again this is about being bold and um and accessible so so i just mentioned that um two themes bold and accessible <laughs>